Guess who's back? Tonight, you're gonna learn all about the edit page, DaVinci Resolve's most powerful set of tools. To take your projects and YouTube videos from a string of cuts to the work of a true editing professional. I'm Noah, let's dive in. Now, when you first open the edit page, it's gonna look something like this. Up here, we have a preview, which is currently blank because we don't have anything loaded in. And down here, we have our timeline. This is where we're going to make our edits. Get started on the timeline. We're gonna first add some media from the media pool here in the corner. Now, if you didn't load any media into the media pool from the media tab, you can actually just drag it into the media pool directly from anywhere on your computer. Now, to get started, I'm just gonna take these two clips and drag them into the timeline here. You can see this is actually automatically created a timeline for our media to sit in. If you want to, you can actually create a new timeline by right-clicking and hitting Create New Timeline. This lets you do stuff like create YouTube shorts and TikToks in the middle of an edit out of certain sections of your video. If you need a timeline that has different resolutions or frame rates than the current timeline. Now, by default, your cursor is going to be in what's called selection mode. That lets you drag and make selections and then drag them around the timeline. You can also hover your mouse over the edge of a video until it changes icon like that. And then when you drag, it will eat into the next clip as you lengthen the clip you're currently on. You can also do this in reverse for the left side of a clip like this. If we look one to the right here, we have trim edit mode. This is going to be a more advanced cursor type. This is gonna allow you to make different kinds of edits based on where you set your cursor on your media. One of the ways this works differently than selection mode is that if you hover over the edge of a clip and it changes icon like earlier, now if we drag, you notice it extends the timeline and actually moves the media with the end of the clip. This way you're not eating into this clip over here while you're extending this one. Regardless of which mode you're in, if you set your cursor in the middle of two clips, you will lengthen one while shortening the other. And then again in trim mode, you can grab the colored edge of a clip to move it left or right in the timeline, or you can grab the thumbnail of the clip and it will actually let you adjust the starting and end times of the clip. This lets you make sure that the clip takes up a strict amount of time, like if you're editing to music, but it lets you adjust which part of the footage you want to be showing. Now this icon to the right of trim edit is called dynamic trim mode. This basically allows you to use your keyboard in place of your mouse when it comes to making the trims of the edit. I prefer using my mouse to edit, so I've never really used this function, but it's something to play around with and see if you prefer. And lastly, we have blade edit mode. This lets you go around and make cuts in the middle of your footage so that these become individual clips. If I'm going too fast or this seems too complicated, stick with me, drag some clips into your resolve play around with these different functions, get a feel for how they work, and check out my video on introducing editing in DaVinci Resolve. You can get there by clicking this button here in this corner. Now these three buttons here are insert clip, overwrite clip, and replace clip. If you have a clip selected in the media pool here, you can hit insert clip, and it will insert it into the timeline, moving all the rest of the timeline in place. If you hit overwrite clip, it will take the clip and put it in the middle of the timeline where you have your playhead. And then if you hit replace clip, it will take the clip you have selected and replace the clip at your playhead with it, which didn't actually change what I had here, but you get the point. This little magnet here enables and disables snapping. If I turn it off, you can see I can freely drag the clip wherever I want. If I re-enable it, you notice it will snap to the ends and beginnings of clips as well as my playhead. This little chain link here will toggle whether or not linked clips stay in sync. By default, if you take a clip and start moving it around, the audio that's attached to it will stay attached and in sync with it throughout the edit. Now, if I don't have anything selected here and I click the link, I can now grab audio and video and separate them from each other. If you ever want to unlink something, you can select it and then right click, and then you can toggle link clips here. And now by default, they'll still be both selected, but if you just click off and then click on one of them, you'll notice that they're separated. Now, of course, if you ever want to link something, just select everything you want to link, right click, and then hit link clips. And now anytime I click on one of these clips, it will select all four and they will move in sync. This little lock right here is called position lock. It just prevents you from moving clips in the timeline. Here we have flags and markers. Flags mark all of the same clip in the timeline. You can see if I click this clip right here and click the blue flag, it will mark all of the clips that use that piece of media with that blue flag. Markers are used to mark points in the timeline. You can see when I click this marker icon, it actually sets a marker where my playhead is. And you can set as many markers as you like. You can also change the color for which marker or flag you're using by clicking this little drop down box and clicking on a different color. At any time, you can click and drag and select your markers and hit delete and it will get rid of the markers you selected. These icons in this slider here just affect zoom. My favorite way to control zoom is by using control and the mouse wheel 
to move back and forth and alt in the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Now that we know how to navigate the timeline and add media, I'm gonna draw your attention to the corners here where there's several different tabs that have even more tools for us to make even more advanced edits. First in the top left, there's the sound library. Now you can actually download a sound library from Blackmagic for use with Resolve, but I like using my own sound effects, so I've never really used it much. Now if we click over to the edit index, this has information on all of the clips in our timeline. And then there's my favorite tab, which is effects. And if we click over to effects, you'll notice it opens the effects tab and the edit index at the same time. If I close the edit index, you'll see the effects tab takes up this entire side of the screen. If I ever want to make my timeline uh, take up the entire bottom of the screen like it was, I can just click this little icon in the corner here and it will move back into place. Now the effects tab is gonna be your best friend on the edit page. This has everything from transitions, to text. They're gonna turn your project into an edit instead of just a cut. Now, if I click onto video transitions and I start hovering my mouse over, you'll see that it will actually give you a preview as you drag your mouse across the tab of what the transition looks like. To add a transition, I like to click and drag and put it on the timeline where I want it. Now, if we click our playhead over to this part of the video, you'll see our transition now transitions to the new part of the video. Now, if you decide you wanna get rid of a transition, you can simply click on it and hit backspace. If I click on over to titles, this is all of our text. The most basic way to add text is to click either the text or text plus, which just has a couple extra features and drag them into the timeline here. You can edit the text by opening the inspector here, which we'll talk more about later. There's also tons of pre-made animated titles that let you add cool effects to your text. I'd avoid overusing those because they're pretty generic and they're used by everybody who has DaVinci Resolve. But even I get away with using some of them every now and then. If we come over here to generators, this is just a bunch of things that need to be generated, I suppose. Things like solid colors that you can drag into the timeline. Click on effects, you have a bunch more pre-made effects like these binoculars here, as well as the fusion composition and the adjustment clip, which we're gonna talk more about later. Click on over to open effects. This is where you have every effect from blur to invert color, to glow effects, to lens flares, to light rays, to mirrors, to scan lines. You get the point. To apply it to a clip, we're simply gonna click it and drag it onto the clip we wanna apply it to. I like this radial blur. It reminds me of the Mr. Krabs meme. What was it? Okay, this is the one. Yeah. After OpenFX, we have Audio FX. You can use effects built in Resolve like noise reduction to reduce the noise and hum and hiss and things like that that are introduced in lower quality mic or phone setups. Now over here in the top right, we have the inspector, metadata, and the mixer. Metadata tells you a little bit about the clip you have selected. And the mixer tab lets you open up the mixer here in the corner to make more advanced audio edits. Now the inspector tab lets you make lots of changes to the clip you have selected. You can make changes to the video, to the audio, to the effects you have applied to the clip, to any transitions you have applied to the clip. There's too much to go over just in this video. So if you have any questions about any of the features of the inspector, leave them in the comments and I will make a video about those specific features. Thank you for watching this episode of Crash Course Resolve. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified whenever a new episode goes live. In the next episode, we're gonna take a look at Resolve's Fusion page and I'm gonna show you why it's better than After Effects.